I have a question for you. Do you like it hard or do you like it soft? In terms of lighting, of course. So with filmmaking and cinematography, there's different types of lighting. There is hard lighting, which is nothing on it. No diffusion, nothing. It's a reflector or barn doors. And then you have soft lighting. With soft lighting, it's diffused, it's softer. You can have multiple layers of diffusion. Um, your light gets softer depending on the distance from your subject, how big your light source is, etc. So we are going to take a look at hard lighting and soft lighting and give you a few examples. So let's get started. So we have hard lighting. Typically hard lighting is used in horror movies or thrillers, some dramas maybe. And then we have soft lighting, which might be used in comedies and dramas. It really just depends. There's no hard line or anything like that when it comes to how to use your lighting and what type of movie. There is just these types of stereotypes in movies. Now, hard lighting is pretty straightforward. It's hard, it's not as flattering. It's used to set scary tones in movies. And then we have soft lighting. Now, soft lighting is essentially hard light with diffusion in front of it. Now, there's many different types of diffusion, many different types of softness. I'm not gonna go over everything like that. I am gonna go over some good tips for soft lighting and how to achieve soft lighting. It's pretty straightforward. You've seen maybe a couple different videos about it and maybe you learned something new today. But I'm gonna give some examples so you can see how it looks to choose what type of lighting you like most, right? We're gonna give examples of hard lighting um, with a reflector. We are going to give examples of different types of soft light diffusion. So we have a light dome, we have a soft box, we have a book light, and then we also have cove lighting. Um, a soft box can be used in many different ways. You may have seen them before. They're big boxes with wires and they have diffusion, a black tarp around it. And they could be circular, octagonal, rectangular. They all have different uses. Um, today we're gonna be looking at like round soft boxes. So uh, I'm gonna be using an Aperture Mini Light Dome 2. And then we also have um, a light dome we're gonna use. It's the Lantern 90 by Aperture. It's a big soft box. Um, lantern and then I'm also gonna be doing a book lighting technique um, with that I'm gonna be using muslin as my bounce and a one-stop diffusion uh, for the other side of the book light and with cove lighting um, we're gonna be using unbleached muslin and that's a really um, unique technique popularized by Roger Deakins you may know him from Blade Runner and Prisoners and Skyfall. He's the cinematographer of those movies and many other movies, No Country for Old Men, etc., uh, Fargo. And he kind of popularized this technique and it's really interesting. I think you might like it. Um, but yeah, let's get started and let's see some examples. Ah, now we have the sweet, sweet, unforgiving hard light. The light that doesn't flatter your skin at all. And you definitely need some type of black pro mist filter on it to make yourself look better. It's hard. It's not flattering. I like it. It's great for subjects who have a little grizzle. Maybe a, like a Western, like the good, the bad, and the ugly. It just has a harshness to it. And when used in the right way in thrillers and horror movies, it amplifies everything. It's, it's the contrast. That's why hard lighting is important. It creates that contrast, that dark and light. And you can't have 
hard lighting without soft lighting, vice versa. Now let's take a little bit closer look at this hard lighting on my face and see how amazing my face looks. Oh, so hard. The lighting is hard. Look at every single pore on my face. I'm scared. That's my scared face for a horror movie. But yeah, here's a closer look and I will be quiet for a couple of seconds so you can examine the hard light. Okay, let's move on to a small soft box. Okay, this is the Aperture Light Mini Dome 2. It is a smaller soft box, probably 22 to 25 inches wide, a uh, circular soft box. You can use a honeycomb grid on the soft box and most all soft boxes. A honeycomb grid, if you don't know, which I'm sure you do know and you're tuning out by now. Um, it is a cross hatch of black plastic that looks like a honeycomb and you Velcro it to your soft box and it focuses the light so it's not spilling everywhere. Pretty basic. Um, but yeah, this is the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2. Um, just a standard soft box size pretty much. And now let's take a little clo let's take a little closer look at me. Alrighty, this is the Aperture Mini Light Dome 2 close up and see how soft it looks in comparison to the hard light and the lantern and the book light and the cove lighting. I'll be quiet. Let's move on. The lantern. Um, it's directly to the right of me. It's set at daylight, 5600, and this is what it looks like. Using a lantern, it's, it's quite soft, and it gives a great wraparound uh, effect. Essentially, the bright parts slowly, gradually get darker, um, just depending on how you're lighting the situation. Light domes are great for filling a room with beautiful, soft light. Typically, they're going to be coming with a black skirt, and that basically just has a, it's a black material that goes around the light dome, so you can focus the light more so it's not spreading everywhere. And it overall probably gives one of the best lights for any type of like standard um, soft boxes. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, I'm gonna just move in a little bit closer so you can see the um, gradual light falling off with the lantern and see what you think. Hi there. This is me close up with a lantern on my face. Take a couple seconds and tell me what you think. Here's a couple seconds. All right, let's move on. Okay, next up we have book lighting. Now, book lighting is pretty neat. It is a piece of diffusion and a bounce board or any type of bounce, and you put the light in between the diffusion and the bounce and wedge it like a book. And whether it's you're using it on a light stand or you're putting it on the table, it typically is like a partially closed book. The light goes in between. Typically it's a hard light with a reflector or some type of projection mount or barn doors. You point the light at the bounce. It bounces off the bounce board and then it goes through the diffusion, double softening your light. Right now I have unbleached muslin and I believe it's a half stop diffusion um, going through. So you're kind of seeing what this looks like. Uh, it's a pretty cool um, item I got from Westcott. My, uh, my brother actually got it for me for my birthday a year ago or so. And it's um, just a cinema kit set for like a six by four frame. It comes with like, you know, a negative fill, diffusion, reflectors, 
and it's kind of like this modular system, so you're not bringing these huge things with you, or you don't need a, a huge truck to carry this piece of diffusion. It's pretty interesting, I like it. But yeah, enough rambling. This is what I look like with a book light. Let's see me a little bit closer. Okay, this is the book light closer. Hmm. So soft, so pretty. Hmm. I realized I'm kind of in a mood today, like a very goofy mood. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or what, but I'm feeling goofy and in a good way, not like I'm going crazy kind of way, like I'm cooped up somewhere filmmaking constantly talking about lights. All right, I'll be quiet now and take a look at me doing a book light. Okay, enough of that. Let's go on to cove lighting. Let's do cove lighting, that's exciting. Now we have moved on to cove lighting. Cove lighting is a very interesting technique. It is not the easiest to set up, but if you're doing multiple scenes in the same area, it is great because there's not as much of a necessity to relight situations. What cove lighting is, is think of 180 degrees of bounce and having the light um, either on the ground pointing up at the sheet or the light being mounted on the ceiling pointing down at the sheets, um, maybe mounted on the ceiling or they could be on C stands pointing down. Um, and basically it's, you know, a various amount of lights, typically maybe three lights and the first light is your light that's the most motivating, closest to the light source. Uh, say if there's a window to my right, I would have that light be the brightest, and then the next light be half as bright, and then the third light be half as bright as the second light. So it kind of tapers down. And essentially what that does is it makes the light on your face fall off gradually versus a little bit more quickly. Uh, basically 180 degrees of unbleached muslin. And unbleached muslin is used a lot in cove lighting because it does look better when it comes to skin tones. It warms them up. Say if you have lights all daylight balanced, and you bounce them on unbleached muslin, you're gonna get a little bit warmer skin tone, a little bit more texture if you want to say um, but yeah let me let me show you the cove lighting a little bit closer okay now this is the cove light a little bit closer um, i have been slowly getting more tired and my energy is tapering down uh, i just had a moment before um, but yeah i'll be quiet and you can take a look at this cove lighting Beautiful. Alrighty, let's wrap it up. That is it for today. Tell me what you thought in the comments. Do you like hard lighting? Do you like soft lighting? Uh, which was your favorite lighting setup? Did you like the video? Um, it pretty much took most of the day to make this video. So if you wanna like and subscribe, that would be awesome. I can make some more videos and we can talk about some cool stuff in filmmaking. I hope you have a great day. I love you. Bye.